He just walked over here to Pennsylvania and Washington, and there is trash burning in the street. The streets have cleared out now, but shortly after the rally that started here ended, people quickly took to the streets, all of them with a similar message saying this shooting didn't need to happen. Down on the ground, you can see the glass from where a bullet shattered this door. Now, this shooting happened Sunday night on Ramadan. It was the last day of a Muslim holiday. A stark difference from what we're seeing in other parts of the country and here in Indiana, but you can imagine people are definitely following the developments. This is a similar scenario that's played out all around downtown Indianapolis tonight. People definitely high with emotions and feelings and just less Letting it out some way or the other. So you're going to see some interesting spots around this house, like the small door. The story goes that they hid 14 slaves in this small space. I am, but the Indians will be hitting the field in a special jersey that looks a whole lot like this. I will not be joining them on the field for Saturday's game. Instead, I'm here right now representing Team News Channel 8. But with concerns about crimes against immigrants growing, companies need to rethink security. It's not sleet, but it is very heavy snow. I'm kind of standing in this angle because the snow is coming in sideways and you can actually hear it tapping on my hat. Waiting, trying to get word, and with each minute that just passed by, that fear just inched down deeper and deeper. She left out race on all of her paperwork and had a white friend stand in for her. The appraisal then ballooned to more than double the previous ones. When the wheels hit the hardwood, it's magic. What keeps me coming back is, is that type of excitement. And once you've found the groove, the music moves you. I love what I do. I love skating. Roller skating. This is life. You can't even explain it because it's beyond skating. It's a whole culture within itself. There's a melody found in each wheel rotation, and depending on how long you go, the symphony can last a lifetime. And that's the beauty, some would call it poetry in motion. And I can change it up and yet still remain smooth. That's where Naptown Real Rollers Lamone Rogers gets his name. He and Lowell Harris founded the group in 1999. Let's see if we can start a culture ourselves and keep that tradition going, and that's kind of how this club actually took off. And the duo is still rolling with quite a few more on the roster. Indy Skateland is home base for weekly adult roller skate night, and the crew always shows out. At the heart is a love for skating, fellowship, and community building. The important thing for this club was to bring people in, teach them the art and the flow of skating, and introduce them to something other than what's out there on the streets. The pandemic's devastation has opened up the skating world even more. This is where a lot of people come to get away. Further proving there's a freedom found out on the floor. And it's an open space for the newcomers and pros. A lot of people always say, I, that just looks so cool. I just, I just wish I could come out there and skate. And you guys look amazing. Well, the only way you can get anywhere to where we are now is if you try it. Harris says when you talk about history, black skating culture grows deep in Indiana. That is one thing that has stayed alive within Indiana is the black culture of skating. It has not only stayed alive, but it is growing and growing bigger. The neighborhood around Indiana Avenue is a historically black neighborhood. Black people started settling here generations ago, including Carlette Duffy's grandparents. I was hoping that, you know, at some point my daughter, my granddaughter could live there um, in a house that was built by our family. For safety reasons, we won't say where Duffy or her grandparents' homes are, but it's in this community. The plan was to refinance her remodeled home, take the extra money, and buy her grandparents' home. Felt like I needed to fight it. I felt like I had to say something. But now she's getting a glimpse at what the housing market could have been like back then. Last year, she tried getting her home appraised, but it hasn't been easy. With help from the Fair Housing Center of Central Indiana, Indiana. She's filed a complaint with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, alleging discrimination based on race. Starting last fall, we've started to see more attention to the two appraisals and how discrimination may be playing a role. Personal research put her home's value around $185,000. An initial appraisal valued it at $125,000. The second, $110,000. Maybe I should whitewash my home. 
and see what happens. After leaving her race off the paperwork, removing all family pictures, African artwork, staging a guest room as a yoga studio, and having a white friend stand in for her, the third appraisal ballooned to 259000 And I just sat down and I just cried because... Two fifty nine. All because I wasn't there. All because I took me out of it. Duffy says she's doing her part now to show the next generation you don't have to simply take whatever is given. These twin drivers are Olivia and Sophia Washer. And let's be clear, Olivia in the driver's seat is the oldest, but they are both taking off on a new journey. In my dream, I want to go to Colorado, but I know in reality that's not going to happen right away. Taking a break from classes at Indiana School for the Deaf through an interpreter, they share their journey to becoming licensed drivers and their hopes for the road. I've wanted to travel, but we've got school, so I can't <laughs> take off just yet. More more than one year ago, Jennifer Alka with Easter Seals Crossroads spearheaded research that ultimately moved the Bureau of Motor Vehicles to add American Sign Language as an option. The videos were readily available for each question in American Sign Language. Sign language is the washer's native language, and like most other people who are deaf, signing and written English are not the same. I'll read the English question, and I'll translate it in my head into American Sign Language and think, how would I sign this? Being deaf, she says, actually makes for a better driver. Alka says not being able to hear heightens other senses. And I think we're more alert than the average person because we rely on our vision and our eyesight so much. The washers say before now, taking the test in English was a hassle, but more of their peers now feel a little bit more comfortable trying. We both have encouraged our friends and other students here at the Indiana School for the Deaf to go take the test. One year ago, Indianapolis reached a boiling point. Daylight protests turned into nighttime unrest. It was in the days immediately after George Floyd's death, who died after a Minneapolis police officer knelt on his neck for more than nine minutes. This was Troy Tate last year. I can't control all these people. I can't tell them to stop being angry. I can't tell them to stop being hurt. Here he is today. Nobody really wanted it to, to get to that point. But I felt like there were people who felt like their voices weren't being heard. That night, he remembers the streets on fire, literally, but also figuratively. People upset that generations of fighting for social justice counted for nothing. There's some hope, but he says there needs to be some accountability, starting with a zero tolerance policy for police brutality. Because 100 years from now, people will look back on 2020 and 2021 and say, wow, you know, I can't believe all that happened. Just like we reflect on the events of the Tulsa race massacre. Before the sun went down, Aaron Williams and other clergy took to the state house steps. From the White House, to, the White House. to this house right here behind us, hold our elected officials accountable. Urging calm and nonviolence. By nightfall, a lot of those words of caution ignored. We understood why the frustration was there, but by no means did we condone the actions behind that frustration. A year later, he applauds steps being taken by local leaders, legislators, and employers, like IMPD implementing policy changes, the governor appointing the state's first chief equity inclusion officer, and corporations vowing to invest in racial equity. And the justice system working, convicting one of the former officers in George Floyd's death, but it's not enough. We never want to see this happen again. It is very unfortunate in today's society that we live in. We will see another instance like this. How do we prevent that from happening again? And it'll take more than just hoping for something better. We all play an equal role in fighting for justice. Well, I think ultimately, as a community, we need healing. We've checked the box on one thing, but we have 20 other things that we have to still address. Well, Alexa, since I started sharing this story on social media, I've gotten so many messages from other people who said they were going to go get checked. Even my best friend just got checked and found out she has one fibroid. So while I do not want to become the story, using this platform to share information, well, I'm all for it. Now, I video logged some of my journey, which you will see, and some of the fibroid images you'll see may be graphic.
I've been telling other people's stories for 10 years. For the first time, I'm telling my own. I am one of the roughly 80% of women to develop fibroids. Black women are most at risk for developing severe symptoms. Over the last few years, they've gotten really bad. And over the last year, really bad to where it was just, oh my gosh. I found out I had one fibroid roughly 10 years ago, but doctors never made a big deal out of it. And as my menstrual cycles got heavier and more painful, I chalked it up as a sign of being a woman and aging, not realizing the frequent urination, anemia, all tied back to the monsters growing inside. I have enough to wear my uterus is the size of someone who's four, four and a half months pregnant. So I've been dealing with a lot of stuff um, with my health all tied back to these things. I finally talked about my experience with a friend and found out there were treatment options, forced to advocate for myself. It took a while to find a doctor to really listen to me. I found one and ultimately opted for a robotic myomectomy where doctors go through small incisions with robot arms to remove my eight fibroids. One fibroid ended up being larger than expected at 10 centimeters. That's about the size of a grapefruit. The doctor also found a couple more. Hopefully I'll start getting some more relief by the end of the week, because right now, this is not fun. It's still not clear why fibroids develop, but doctors do know heredity often has something to do with it. This is my dad's sister, Michelle Butler. Hey, Amy. <laughs> hey, darling. I call her Amy Gwynn. A doctor found a growth in her uterus in 1978 after giving birth to my older cousin. At that time, fibroids wasn't really something that they were discussing you know he, he just told me he didn't know what it was he said you definitely have a growth but i don't know what it is fast forward to 1995 she had her first surgery but from then to 2003 the pain and excessive bleeding came back worse than ever they had come back about a dozen of them forcing an emergency full hysterectomy when i got to be 40 here they are the size of grapefruits oranges all of my ovaries, tubes, uterus, everything, intestines, everything was grown together. She's much better now. As for me, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. I'm getting there. And by the way, my mother, I found out my mother also had fibroids, but mm. her experience wasn't as bad because they started causing problems right before menopause and fibroids can shrink during that time period. You know, it's been amazing. We got a chance to kind of watch you through this journey. You've talk to us about this journey, talk us through it really. Talk to us about having to advocate for yourself because you have to do that. Well, in this role, I talk about advocating for yourself, particularly in the medical world. So trying to find a doctor was just a really, it was a struggle. And so when I found one, I just didn't like the interaction. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was being belittled. I felt like they weren't taking my um, concerns to heart. And so I just had to find a new doctor. And, and in this story or in this process, I've learned it's okay to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You do not have to stay at the same doctor. Shop around, shop around, shop around until you feel comfortable. Absolutely. I mean, your life has completely changed now. You're feeling better. I am feeling better. I'm not completely all the way there because as I mentioned, my uterus had grown to a size four and a half pregnancy. So I'm still kind of bloated. Um, I've always been a little thick. Hey, not this thick. Listen, so, <laughs> being a little thick is good, okay? Yeah, so so I am on the process of recovery and I just feel so much better already. I'm so glad about it. I am.